25 years of training in gyms all across the world, I have found the five dumbest things that I've ever seen in the gym, and today I'm gonna share them with you. One thing that I have seen that I thought was the most insane thing I'd ever seen in the gym was people actually taking openers before a meet, the day before a meet. So flashback to about 2015, I opened up the gym for a pretty prestigious coach to come in with one of their lifters for the meet at the Arnold Classic here in town. And then what I found was he wanted to use the gym for them to actually take an opener the day before this person was gonna compete. And as you can possibly guess, that person bombed out the next day. I don't even think got one squat in. What was the problem with that? Well, the big problem was is that if you're getting close to 80, 85% a day before a competition, you're actually going to be diving into your energy expenditures right before you do a competition. So what's wrong with this is that you need at least three to five days for an amateur lifter and almost 14 days for an advanced lifter to be completely recovered. Now that doesn't mean you do any or nothing in between, those particular times but it means that this right here you cannot do do not take openers or heavy weights the day before you're actually going to test your max so the second big thing that i've seen which was one of the top five dumbest things i've ever seen is to take too much pre-workout in the gym now most of you guys that know me i'm not a big fan of pre-workouts i'm not a fan of stimulants so this was automatically a no-no but the big problem with this was this person took four and a half times the amount that was listed on the on the damn label and ended up puking and nearly having a heart attack even before we got through the warm-up. Now, I'm going to tell you that the winning warm-ups, if you've done them, you realize they're no game show, but you add in four times the amount of pre-workout into those, you're going to have a big, big problem. So do not take pre-workouts. Make sure you eat properly and sleep properly, and you'll find that your energy levels will go up, but definitely do not overconsume these type of stimulants before you train or you're going to find yourself in the hurt locker really fast. Now this one involves one of my local fire departments. I'd actually written on the board for a one rep max deadlift without putting progress to a one rep max or any of that nature thinking that that was common sense. And what you find is that common sense is not too common. One of my firemen actually took a max on the deadlift with no warm ups. So his max on the deadlift was around 400. He started the bar at 400 pounds. Obviously, he got a nice back tweak and a big scolding from me in administration. He did not take 135, 225, 315, and 405. He started the bar right at 405. Now, for most of us, that seems completely <laughs> But at the end of the day, a lot of people have to have things spelled out. So that's why when I write workouts for people and stuff, or if you're a trainer or a coach, make sure you write exactly what you say because some people will not take common sense and it will not be that common. The next big thing that I've seen a lot of is eating tons of junk food before training. Now, why is that an issue? Well, if you train like us, your lactic acid tolerance has to be very, very high, meaning your conditioning needs to be very high. Meaning if you're actually training to be anything good at all, your conditioning needs to be pretty high. If you're not used to training hard or you're actually doing things pretty smart and not eating a ton of shit, what you're gonna realize is that eating tons of junk food is not gonna be good when you're doing a very, very hard workout. Now that could be maxing, that could be doing speed work with lower rest periods or a winning warm-up. But what you find is that if you're eating stuff that's not sitting well with your stomach, it's probably going to come right back up. Especially for intermediate to beginner lifters, all they think of is I want to gain weight and get big so they eat whatever sounds good. In the long run, one, it's not good for your health, and two, if you're training hard enough with short enough rest periods as you should be doing, it's probably not going to sit in your stomach very long and then you're gonna be puking your guts out. The next and last thing that you see a lot of, especially the intermediate and beginner, but sometimes even the advanced guys, is they'll retry a lift after missing it first time. Case in point, we were training with Vlad, which has the world record in knee wrap squat of over 1,100 pounds. Me, Vlad, and Chuck are squatting at West Side. Chuck stomps the living shit out of Vlad in a squat, somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 pounds on the bar and 400 plus pounds of band. Okay, so we're talking 1,200 pounds on the bar. Totally insane. Vlad misses it three times, almost kills all of us spotting it, while Chuck stood up with it like an empty bar. Vlad, Vlad's ego was so out of whack and wanted to win so bad that he kept trying it again and trying it again, and I'm surprised that none of us died, including himself. But what's the rule and what's the thing we can learn from that? The big thing we can learn from that is, in my opinion, 
And from what I've seen in the gym, your injury rate goes up 50% after you miss a lift one time. That means you need to learn that when you fail, you're done. Now, maybe sometimes every once in a while a lift just gets out of the groove or something's off and you can try it again and it might be okay. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, once you fail, you need to walk away, regather yourself and save yourself for another time because the injury rate goes up exponentially after completely failing. So learn from the experienced lifters. And if you miss, do not try it again unless it was something vastly technical. So in this episode, we went over some really dumb stuff that we've seen at the gym, all the way from eating incorrectly to taking too many jumps after you miss to all kinds of other stuff. The trick of it is, is that a lot of times this stuff is just common sense. Make sure that you're taking all of your training seriously because you only get one body, you only get one set of joints. So once you start accumulating injuries from doing stupid stuff, it's very, very hard to bounce back from that and make positive progress. So don't do dumb stuff at the gym and try to learn from things and from other people that post stupid shit on YouTube. Now, if you really like this video, go check out our Patreon channel, sign up for that as well, and then make sure that you guys go on the YouTube and stay into all of these videos because we're going to go into a lot more stuff, including more dumb stuff we see in the gym.